I have a web app here that displays 100 posts from an API. And if I type into the search input, then it only displays the posts that match. It searches the title and the body of each post. Let's see how this works in React. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to apply a search filter to API data in React. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Let's get started today by looking at our starter code. I am at the package JSON and I've already removed the boilerplate dependencies that we're not going to use after I started with npx create react app. So you can go ahead and do that if you haven't. And what we're going to add now are some more dependencies that we need. So I'm going to press control and the back tick and then I'm going to paste in what I have for dependencies. And it went ahead and launched when I did that, but I've got Axios here. And then let me go ahead and pull this up so you can see everything else. After Axios, I have three different font awesome dependencies. And you can pause the video and type those if you want to. I'm also putting a link in the description to how to get started with font awesome components in React. So you could also follow that link. And of course, you can look at my source code that's available at the link in the description for GitHub. So now that we've added those dependencies, you'll also see them all here in my package JSON when you look at the source code in GitHub. And you can see the three font awesome dependencies. And I've also got Axios added here. Okay, with those dependencies added, we can quickly look at the index.js and you can see I've removed some of the boilerplate. We are using React 18. We'll have strict mode enabled and it won't bother us today. I've already put in some of my own CSS. I'm not going to go over that. This is not a CSS tutorial, but of course you can make your own or copy mine from the available source code if you want to. So let's get started in the app.js component. And you can see I've removed the boilerplate from the app.js component as well, and then just to find an empty content variable, and that's what I have set here to return. We'll come back to the app.js. Right now, let's create a new directory, and let's call this directory API. And then inside the API directory, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this axios.js. You might see this called api.js or some other names at times, but whatever it is, just so you know what you have named it. I'm going to name it axios.js, and then I'm going to import axios from axios. And after I do that import, now I still need that S, there we go. I just wanna get rid of the semicolon. I'm trying not to use those as much as I used to. I want to export const and create an API variable. I'm going to set this equal to a new Axios instance. And inside this Axios instance, we need to set a base URL. And this is where we're going to define the API that we're working with. And it's HTTPS colon slash slash JSON placeholder dot typeycode.com. So that's the base URL. And then we can add, say, a slash posts or any other route we want to to the end of the base URL in the different CRUD functions we would create, such as create, read, update, and delete. All we need today, though, is to read the posts. So we're going to say export const get posts, set this equal to an async function. And then inside this function, I'll define a response. And then we will await the API instance that we created above with axios.get and we'll attach slash post to that base URL. So we'll get all the posts back. And this is a fake API that will give us 100 posts. Then we're going to return the response dot data because that's where Axios gives us that JSON data. And that's all we really need to do here inside of this Axios file. So now let's go back to the app.js and at the top of the app.js, we can import this get posts function that we just created. So it will be get posts and it will come from dot slash API slash and Axios. There we go. After that, we're going to need to import a couple of hooks. So we can import use state and use effect. And this will come from React. And now inside the app component, let's go ahead and set that state up. So we're going to have posts and set posts and that will equal use state. And let's start out with 
an empty array. And then I'm just going to press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow, and we're going to set our next state as well. And this is going to be search results, and then of course, set search results here. And this will also be an empty array. And now let's go ahead and create a use effect here. So we'll say use effect, and then inside of use effect, we'll just leave it empty for now. And the dependency array is going to be empty because we only want this to happen at load time. Now this will happen twice with strict mode and React 18, but that will not hurt anything to go ahead and request that data twice, that's okay. Now inside of use effect, let's go ahead and call our get post function and then say dot then, and then we'll have JSON data. So we'll use an arrow function here. I typed a plus by mistake. But inside the arrow function, we will set the posts to the JSON data. And after that, we want to return the JSON. So it goes on to the next dot then. And then we'll have JSON once again. And there, we'll go ahead and set the search results. So let's say set search results. And we'll also start out with that same JSON data. So they will mirror each other in the beginning. And now we're going to have two components to work with. We're going to have a search bar and also a list page, or we could call it a post page, but that will display the posts. So let's go ahead and create that search bar next. So over here, we can highlight the app.js and create a new file in VS Code, and we'll call this searchbar.js. I'm going to type R-A-F-C-E because I have ES7 React Snippets extension installed, and that will help me quickly create a functional component here in React. However, you can just type this all out as well. We'll just start with that basic setup for the functional component, and at the top, let's import font awesome icon from for, at Fort Awesome slash React dash Font Awesome. So after we have the Font Awesome icon imported, we want a specific icon now, and we're going to import FA magnifying, bigger word that I'm having a hard time spelling, magnifying glass, and that comes from at Fort Awesome slash free dash solid dash dash SVG dash icons, quite an import there. Okay, now we have our imports. The search bar is going to receive a couple of things from the app.js component. So props coming down, we'll have the posts, and we'll also have the set search results function. Now inside of the JSX, I'll go ahead and remove this div that has search bar, and I'm going to create a header element. Inside the header, I want a form. And then the form is not going to have an action, so we can remove that attribute that's there by default. I'm going to give this a class name equal to search, so it matches up with my CSS. And then I also want to give this an on submit, and I'm going to set this equal to handle submit. And then we can go ahead and put a space between the closing tag and the opening tag. So now that we have this handle submit here, let's go ahead and create that function. And it's really going to be just to ignore the default action of the form, which would be to reload the page. So I'm just going to say const and have a handle submit. And I'm going to set this equal to an anonymous function that receives the event. And then I'm going to say e dot prevent default, and I'm not really going to use the submit of the form. So I know some may ask, so why create a form? Well, every chance I get, I want to create semantic HTML. Even though I'm using React, it's still going to be compiled to HTML. So it's important to create that semantic structure. It's one of the foundational things about creating a web page. So I don't want to ignore that. And so I usually create a form when I have inputs, and then I'm going to create an input inside this form and we'll add several attributes to that. So we will have a class name once again, and that's going to equal search, and I'm going to use kind of a BEM naming convention here. So it's two underscores after search and then input. After that, you know, I'll put these on separate names too. Also, I should mention, I know I say attribute a lot, and I have been told many times it's attribute, and I just have a hard time saying that word correctly. So that's my little hang up, I guess. After that, we'll have an ID of search as well. This is a text input, and then we'll have the on change. And let's set that on change to another function that we'll call 
handle search change. There we go. And then we'll close out the tag with the slash and the closing greater than sign. So now we've got a form and an input, but we're going to need one more thing. Let's go ahead and put a button as well. And let's give this button a class name and set that equal to search two underscores and button. And then inside of the button, let's put a font awesome icon and we'll set the icon equal to the one we imported, which was FA magnifying glass. There we go. And now we're finished with the JSX. And now for this handle search change function, this is where many would create state and of course also import use effect. And then when the state changed, they would run the function. I'm just going to create a function that we're going to run and I'm not going to import use state or use effect in this component. So I'm just going to use handle search change, set this equal to an anonymous function that gets the event. And I should mention, there's nothing wrong if you do import use state and use effect and structure this component in that way. I just thought this would be simpler to just create this function and it will do everything we need right here. So now I'm going to say if there is no event.target.value. So basically if the input is empty or we erase everything we have typed in the input, then we're just going to return set search results and set it equal to the original posts so all of the posts display when that search input is empty. After that, let's define a results array that we're going to get when we search the posts. And here we'll set the posts, so that's the original data, and we will filter those posts. Now for each post, we'll have an arrow and we'll say post.title dot includes. So this is a string dot includes method. And now we'll look for that event dot target dot value. I'm going to press Alt Z so this wraps and doesn't continue to scroll. And so this returns a Boolean. So if it has what is in the search input, then it will return true. And then that post will be included in the results array. Now we could stop right here and only search the titles or we can say or with the two pipes and do the same thing to the body for each post. So we have dot includes and then we have e dot target dot value. So this will give us results from all of the titles and all of the post bodies as well. Now after that we need to go ahead and set search results and we'll just set it equal to that results array that we just created. Let's go back to the app.js and here we can import the search bar we just created. So we'll say import search bar from search bar and then we'll use that instead of the content down here that I had created just to prevent the file from looking like it had an error when we started. So I'm going to create a fragment here. I guess I need the parentheses around that as well as we'll take up multiple lines. And then we'll put our component search bar inside of this fragment because there's eventually going to be another component, our list page is what I'm going to call it. You could call it post page or any other name you want to, but there will be another component. So here we've got search bar. It's going to receive the posts. And then it's also going to receive the set search results. And I'll type that in as well. Set search results equals set search results and then we can close out that component. And now let's create the remaining component. We'll highlight the app again so we know we're in the right area of our file tree. Create a new file and let's call this listpage.js. R-A-F-C-E once again to type out a functional component. And then inside of this, we don't need to import any hooks, but it's going to receive a prop and that prop will be the search results. Let's go ahead and save this page quickly and I'm going to create one more page called post. It will be post.js and we will need this component inside of the list page. I'm just going to quickly paste this in and go over it with you. It's a simple functional component with no imports but it does receive a post. And for every post it receives, it creates an article element 
that has that post information. So here we have the post.title and an H2, the post.body in a paragraph, and the post ID inside of another paragraph. And that's all inside of an article. So we will use this as we map through the posts inside of the list page. So back at the list page, let's go ahead and import that post component. We'll have import post from post. There we go. And now we can complete the rest of the list page. I'm going to start at the top of the functional component and here let's define results. Let's set this equal to the search results that are received as a prop and let's map over those search results and we know there'll be posts. So I'll just say for each post here and then we're going to use that post component and it needs a key as we map through. So we'll set that to the post ID. After we do that, then we'll set the post equal to post. I'm going to press Alt Z again to wrap this to the next line. And then we should be able to close out that component. So now we have our results. So let's define our content for the page. So I'll say const content, and I'm going to set this equal to, we're going to check the results length first to see if we have any results. And this will be a ternary, so if there are is length to the results array, then we'll display the results. But if there's not, let's go ahead and display another article. And inside this article, we'll create a paragraph and we'll just say no matching posts. And then after that, all we need to do is return our content down here, but this is going to be inside of a main element. So I'll switch that div to a main element and then I'll switch the content or the list page it said to the content inside of curly braces. And that's what we want. And after that, we should be ready to run our app unless I have overlooked something. So let's do control in the back tick, scroll to the bottom here and type npm start. And then I'll pull this over to the left and let's see what we get inside of the browser. Now we have a couple of problems. It looks like I left the class name off of the button here. Let's see if there's another error that we can look at and see why we are not receiving any of the results. As I scroll up, oh, we have a class name with one S, so that may be our issue there. And that might be causing all of the errors. So I will pull this back over and I'll close out the terminal. Let's go back to that search bar, bring this back to full page, and see if I can fix the problem. Class name needs two S's. Save that and let's see if we have any other problems in our app. Yes, we currently have no data coming in. Let's go ahead and see if there is another issue in the app. And this may be a little more difficult because I don't have an error either. So I will try to figure this out. Ah uh, yes, the only problem is we did not import our list page back into the app to actually use it. I got ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll say import list page, and we'll have that from list page, and then below, we'll put it below the search bar, of course. We'll have our list page. It's going to receive the search results as a prop. And now we'll move this over. And once again, everything is working as it should now. So that looks much better. We're getting those posts back. Let's see if we can filter those results. So we'll type the first Latin word. Here's another one. So we should have a couple of results here and they're both in the title. That's fine. Let's see if we can search for something that's possibly in the body or the title. So. I don't know what these Latin words are, but this is Dolor, I believe. So here this is in the body. The next one is in the title. And the next one, I believe, is in the body. Yes, it is. So let's put a space after that. And now we only have one left because the others had an ES after Dolor for Dolores. This just has a Dolor here somewhere. There it is. So yes, everything's working as expected. And I hope you followed along with that well. Let me know if you have questions, of course. This is something that I covered in the Intro to React course, but I did it just a little differently and I've had some requests for it and I wanted to go over that once again. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. 
and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.